Party theatre. Now it's all right. You sat in the stalls. Don't worry about a thing. I'll sort everything out. Come with me. I'll sort you out. Come on. Please welcome to the stage Minnie Melandra Jacks. Chloe. Chloe. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um. Welcome to Arty Farty. All right. right. We're Melanda Jacks, a theatre company from Moston. We use theatre and digital art to amplify community voice. Our most current work explores youth leadership and class, specifically what it means to be working class in today's society. And you're watching our festival in our house, um, supported and presented by Manchester International Festival uh, and recorded here where we live in our house in Moston. Where? Moston is our home and an area in Manchester that has had, for a very long time, a bad reputation. Historically, a mining and linen mill working community, um, it has been referred to as disadvantaged, deprived, underfunded, underprivileged. Um, and although these um, comments may be arguable, um, it's the people of Moston and Harper Hay that keep us hopeful. It's Corinne on you. The arts are a huge part of our lives and they always have been. Um, me and Josh met when we were at school, when we were 12 years old, in a rehearsal room for The Wizard of Oz, which was the school play. And I played Glinda, and Josh played the Cowardly Lion. Yes. <laughs> Over the past few years, we've seen uh, Moston and Harper Hay become a bit of a hotspot for arts organisations to come in and deliver workshops and performances. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. The arts has been proven to help with your mental health and well-being. Um, music, and drama, the arts, comedy, dance, has been at the heart of many communities for a really long time. But art means different things to different people. We've seen far too many times organisations coming to Moston and Harper Hay and delivering workshops, events, performances, uh, but without really even consulting with the community or even having a conversation with them beforehand. So how do they know that it's even wanted and what the community wants? Um, do they think that, you know, because Moston is uh, deprived, underprivileged, uh, underfunded, that, you know, that they can get the funding for that area and they know that it'll pay the wages for a few years? <laughs> Stay with us this evening as we directly ask our community, does Moston have the hay need the arts? We'll be having a chat with some locals from the area and we're dead excited to show you some of the local artwork that's been produced by Moston and Harper Hay locals. Yeah, and also to go alongside this show and during the run up to this piece, um, we created uh, an arts pack that could be downloaded and also uh, we delivered a few in the area as well as having them available for pickup at the Miners Community Arts and Music Centre in Moston. Um, but it's still not too late. You can still download uh, a digital arty farty arts pack. Uh, you just need to go to uh, Melandra Jacks, uh, at Melandra underscore Jacks on Instagram and on our Twitter. Check out the bio, follow the link tree and find an arts pack. Uh, so without further ado, sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Chloe, I've fallen. Chloe, I've fallen. Bloody hell, Josh. We haven't done a risk assessment for this. What is art? Art is an expression of human imagination. Art, I suppose, is different to everybody, what anybody thinks art is. Art to me is your culture, your identity, your everything about the actual nature of being a person. Art is bright, colourful. To me, art is what brings my soul alight most. Art is how you express your imagination and connect with other people. The first thing I think of when it comes to the arts is singing and music. Musical, physical, because dancing's art as well. 
from a simple card made for a grandparent by a grandchild to some of the major works, sculptures, paintings that are shown throughout the world. Um, I'd say it's a really fantastic way of communicating. It's just something that stimulates your brain in a way that other things don't. And it's a kind of way to that humans leave imprints and tell stories. Hey, we're in frames now too. Hey, um, so me and Chloe are also filmmakers and we work with our film partner, David, as Modify Productions. Um, and about three years ago, Modify created a film called Round Deer. It was a documentary filmed in Moston and Harper Hay. Uh, and we chatted to Lou, who owns a local community arts and music centre, the Miners Community Arts and Music Centre here in Moston. Uh, this is what Lou has to say uh, about the Miners, but also about the arts. Enjoy! My name's Lou Beckett and I run the Miners Community Arts and Music Centre in Moston on the Miners Estate, Teddington Road. Yeah, just off St Mary's Road. Right, here's, here's what my roles are here, right? My roles are barman, cellarman, cook, cleaner, cinema, usher for the cinema, babysitter sometimes, anything you can imagine within an, an area within the community is probably what I am in here. Oh yeah, roof fixer, that's another one. Roof fixer, um, doors, uh, joiner, welder, oh yeah, I'm a welder anyway. Um, roofer, just said that. Electrician, yeah. All them sort of little jobs, yeah. Wash pots as well, I'm a pot washer. So yeah, I'm trying to get back the times when I was a kid and we used to enjoy going out. But I want I want the young kids to get, get into something that they'll enjoy, if you know what I mean. So that we need we need to get this keep this place going. In this environment in, in, in the miners, I want them to come to come in so they can like get into like art and drama and just see something different, music and that sort of thing. Because when I was a kid, there was never anything like that. There was there was clubs, youth clubs, but it was always like, oh, do you want to do boxing? Or oh, do you want to do football? Because if you come from a council estate or anything like that, when I was a kid, that's all you was, how, how can I say, that's all you was brought up to do. See, there was a few of us on the estate who was into music and art and stuff like that, but was always considered like the outcasts, you know what I mean? And it was like... Um, don't you like football? No, there's something wrong with you then. You know, that sort of thing. Don't you like boxing? Well, a bit, yeah, but oh, no, there's something wrong with you then. So, you know what I mean? Well, I like Kandinsky or, or Mark Rothko's paintings or something. And you say something like that and they go, you what? You know what I mean? Well, what about Anne Shearer? No. You know, there's something wrong with you then. So, that's, I'm, but I'm trying to get him where... Where you can still like football, but you can still sport, and you can still go get into your art and your music and other things. You know what I mean? That sort of thing. So, them sort of things when I was growing up were totally different from what they are now. Lou is an artist in his own right, and here are some of his pieces. Now, um, he does paintings and sketches, and he also makes uh, sculptures out of metal. And me and Chloe just want to say a massive thank you to Lou and Paula and the team at the Miners Community Arts and Music Centre in Moston because the work that they do is amazing, especially what they've achieved over lockdown with the food bank and the fundraiser. Anti-art here. Outreach. I'm here in Moston and Harper Hay. I'm going to turn this deprived and disadvantaged area into an all-singing, all-dancing showstopper. <clears throat> I have received £100,000 worth of funding to fulfil my agenda and I'm going to implement it right here in Moston and Harper High. The first step is to find somebody to engage with. Not again. This young man doesn't know it yet, but his life is going to be changed around through art and musical participation. It's not his fault that he was brought up in such a deprived and disadvantaged area. Let's check the tick boxes. Tick! 
This young man is clearly in need of some cultural and creative enrichment. But he will of course first need to sign this consent form for me to photograph him having his life enriched through music. And this, take and this. Okay, and sing. Smile. And shake it. Shake it. Nice. Smile. Yes, honey. Yes. Shake it more. Like this. Yes. Yes, yes. 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 Nice. Nice. So, you've come such a long way. <laughs> Oh, I've, got, I've had enough of this. Right, I'm, a, I'm a painter. I've got a degree in arts. And, and I, I run a local community centre where we do dance classes, arts classes, sculpture making. I don't need you to come in with your bloody tambourine. Success. Through this funding, I've managed to deliver a meaningful project and change this area through the power of the arts. Join me next time as I tackle treacherous tame side. So as part of the show, we sent out an artist call out for artists from Moston and Harper A to send um, in any artwork that they've previously done. Um, and we have picked three fantastic ones. So first up, we have Demarice um, with a poem he wrote about lockdown. So here it is. I was inspired to write this poem because I wanted to write something different to my usual poems, which is either quite fantastical or quite personal. I wanted to write something that still does resonate with me, but will resonate with anyone that listens to it or that reads it. And it all came from a sudden burst of inspiration in the first lockdown, as like most people, I was sat at home bored doing nothing. Let's lament about the fact that streams are getting clearer. Put on a happy face as the end draws nearer, or a happy mask so you don't get infected. Stay clear from your peers so you're all protected. Stock up what you need, things like toilet roll, but stop the panic buying, you'll lose control. Because right now, life ain't what it seems. Every day, people pray while my generation laughs at memes. Maybe to cope, or maybe to fight, but I know, whilst we must be apart, we must unite. Are the arts important? Oh my goodness, yes. Uh, we're not human if we haven't got the arts in some aspect of our life. Art is important because it unites people. The arts are important to me because it gives me a place of comfort. I think it's something that we really we take for granted. I, think, I don't think there's many people that realise just how important it is and how much of an amazing tool it can be. It's basically you looking at what goes on within our society, stories that are being told and things that have happened within it. Uh, the arts is the sector 100% important, like for entertainment, for <laughs> peace of mind, for <laughs> just expression, I think. And it also really pushes the societal conversations that we have forward. It can sometimes prompt you into action about things that you truly care about or it can make you feel things that maybe you didn't think you cared about as much. <laughs> Art has consistently been uh, a pivotal character in a lot of um, progressive um, movements and revolutions and you know to take the arts away <laughs> is to cripple that sector that constantly challenges our thinking. Yeah, because without a world of art, it'd be very boring. You don't get no music, no dancing, no television, no magazines, no wallpaper, all things like that whilst doing art at the end of the day. Or even baking a cake. Come on, that's creative in itself. There's nothing like it, is there? There's nothing like the arts. If Whichever way route you go down, there's nothing in this world that's anything like the arts. I moved here five years ago and uh, the first two years were a bit like that 
and then we came had a group of us and we enjoyed it that much we performed a, a group called the in between us and we had a really good time and we still do hopefully we can carry on having the good time i was very surprised i thought it would just be old fogies <laughs> but it's not it's good the in between us is a group of people that enjoy being alive and things like that. So, I mean, before we got the in-between, I felt really depressed. But since we had the in-between, we've had a good time. We go to the theatre, we go out for meals, we go to watch things all the time, yeah, don't do, we? Yeah, do and a lot we have of a things, good yeah. time mm. at doing it. Yes. I don't think we can publish what we say here. I think it wouldn't be very, very yeah. entertaining <laughs> for youngsters, as they say. I don't feel as though I'm depressed all the time. And it's good getting out meeting other people besides the people that's in here. I'm Sandy Kroll. Uh, true name is Sandra Crulet, if you wish to use that. <laughs> but I'm here and I tend to do, I, I wanted to start to do all the organising for different things to do within the court. And I originally come from Nottingham. And my name's Jean. <laughs> <laughs> we, ri we rely very heavily on Sandra, she's brilliant. Oh, thank you, dear. Mm. <laughs> I met a lot of uh, resistance from friends saying that it was an old people's home and <laughs> you wouldn't like it. But we moved 10 years ago when I was, well, 11 years ago when I was 60. And uh, I'm really pleased that I did. Um, we have no worries about getting rogue plumbers and <laughs> people, you know, like that. We go out for the day and... Um, we go to the art classes. Uh, art classes is a bit of a misnomer, really. It's, <laughs> it's more of a, a chaos afternoon. <laughs> and um, we, we enjoy that. I don't do the art class. I just sit there and make fun. She's a model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sandy likes me being a model. She yeah. blows me out like a blowfish. <laughs> and every time, it never changes. She never even gives me a thin face, it's always a fat face. So, I mean, what can you do? I gave Sandy a call to see how she was doing now at the minute uh, and to see how important the arts are to the group in general. Okay. Hello, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. What, obviously, when things are running normally, uh, what sort of arts things do you get up to? I don't know, Monday. We used to go for craning sessions. Mm. Well, we thought that was quite good, really. But we, we started doing all sorts of things. So people were coming and doing their knitting. Uh, there's a lady here now who is willing to, uh, when we start again, teach people how to crochet because they have never done it properly. Um, we still do colouring sessions. And I enjoy colouring. Um, I do it on my phone anyway. <laughs> I find it very relaxing. And I think a lot of our ladies and residents here they find it it's lovely because you can do that and have a chat at the same time and it, it really it, it does you lift you it makes you feel so happy which i see ladies find it very difficult being on their own i asked sandy a little bit about the relationship with home theater in manchester <laughs> yes we try to get once a month to go down there and we used to get the minibus and pop off down there to see it some of them we used to think was a little bit over the top it's avant-garde, but I mean, it was, there were so many funny things that went off there, but there were some very good things that we enjoyed as well. And there was one, <laughs> the falls to mind now every time I think about it, we're, we're all good, I and mean, then about ten of us, I think, all on the same row. And it was dragging on this play. Um, and the thing was, it went on and on and on until it got to the point just before actually they managed to give her the poison a good percentage of us along the road kept saying oh for god's sake i'll drink it i'll kill a thought if you like <laughs> and that's how we yeah exactly <laughs> we enjoyed them and we enjoyed it because it was an occasion of getting out one of our favourite things about doing this show has been connecting with the fantastic Lily Lane Primary School. 
Um, so they have their very own poet in residence, writer in residence, um, Louise Fazakali. Um, and we have been able to share some of the fantastic work um, that they do down at Lily Lane. Yeah, and here is Louise now to tell us a little bit more about that role and also followed by some amazing performances from the uh, young people at Lily Lane Primary School in Moston. Hiya, I'm Louise. I am the writer in residence at Lily Lane Primary School. What, what does that mean? It means I'm the school poet but because I also have a background in theatre and drama, I bring that to uh, the school as well. So for me, it's dead important to work with children to help them to access their emotions, to learn how to use their words, and to have confidence in public speaking. Like these skills we're teaching them, they're gonna take them forward for every job interview they go into where they've got to ask a question and they've got to speak loudly and be understood. And then the skills we teach them in terms of like using their imagination, it's amazing. And it's exciting for me to be an artist working in a school and because I'm not a teacher, so I bring different things like I don't care if the kids have got a pen license or not, I just let them write in pen. Um, so that's a bit of excitement for them. And um, I'm not as maybe as tired as teachers sometimes are because they work so hard. So I can bring in a different sort of energy. And this skill's great, look. Um, they've had an artist, like a visual artist, in to make these felt things, these birds. And then um, staff at the school have like, made these little bird cages. So it's just really beautiful to be around. It makes me feel happy when I come into school and there's loads of dead good um, like art backgrounds and stuff, as well as the work I do with words. My name is Harry Bristol and this is my cupcake hole, which I dedicated to my little cuz, also known as Spaghetti Head. Little cuz. Little cuz always used to come over, lift up the fence and come under. We used to play teachers and also be bakers, but now things are about to change. Things are about to become strange. No shouting, no sound. Now Spaghetti Head is gone, little cuz isn't around. Ice creams, ice creams, get your ice creams. One scoop for 8.50 or two for 20 pounds. Ice creams, ice creams, get your ice creams. <sighs> really miss live theatre. Ice creams, ice creams, get your ice creams. One scoop for 8.50 or two for 20 pounds. Ice creams, ice creams, get your ice creams. What is the best piece of art you have ever seen? What is the worst piece of art you have ever seen? I saw the sunflower, sunflowers painting um, last year, the year before, the year before, um, and that sort of blew me away. Uh, I love Shakespeare, and um, that's something that I think started at school because I did Romeo and Juliet at school, and that's where that passion came from. I would say Guernica at um, El Museo uh, Reina Sofia in Madrid. Um, that picture, the political statement it makes is about, you know, the disasters of war, uh, possibilities of peace. It's such a political, strong statement. So the best piece of art in terms of life here I've ever seen is between Lion King and the Barbershop Chronicles. Yeah, I think that, that was less of an expression of imagination and more of a application uh, in terms of barbershop 
uh, more of an application of imagining like in, of like creativity into what exists in, in, in the world and that being an expression of power um and it was beautiful uh lion king if you've not seen it get to see it it's beautiful it's phenomenal the music oh my gosh i love musicals my best piece of art i have to say um it's an untitled poem by a poet from new orleans called sonny patterson and it just gives me goosebumps i just think it's amazing i don't believe that you can define art as the best of or the worst of I think it's all, as my dad would say, it's in the eye of the beholder. One of the best pieces of theatre I've seen was As You Like It at the Globe um, in 2019, uh, I think it was 2019, in the summer. And it was my first experience of being a groundling uh, with my best friend Jazz and mum was sat uh, on the lowest tier, so she was on ground level watching it from there. Um, and I remember watching these actors who had been cast so perfectly. You know, some were different genders than it was originally written, some had disabilities. There was a cast of such diversity, which I thought was beautiful. They delivered the text in such a a raw, honest, authentic way, and yet made it so current at the same time. I think to do that is quite special because that's how you connect an audience to a piece of theatre. Um, and I remember just absolutely, like I was beaming the whole time. I couldn't stop laughing at the funny bits. I couldn't stop crying at the sad bits. It was just brilliant. The best piece of art, music, otherwise is Whitney Houston, it's not right but it's okay. Also, classic 80s acid house music. It's just amazeballs. Probably the worst piece of art. <laughs> Might be a bit controversial this, but it's got to be Andrew Lloyd Webber's Cats. <laughs> I didn't even stay till the end. To pinpoint the worst thing that I've seen, I, I suppose, I've seen some some plays. I remember seeing a play 20 years ago, but it was a very old play and had, had an audience of about 36 people in a 2,000 seater venue, which is quite telling. Um, and it was like watching paint dry. There was nothing from stage. And I think as an actor, when they come out into a huge venue, which it shouldn't have been at, um, it's hard for them to feel motivated and to get going and it just didn't lift off the ground but it was a very old play. The worst piece of art I think is cowboy music. It's garbage. I mean, who in the right mind listens to that? Maybe one day I listen to myself singing in the shower so I, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I've seen some pretty bad dances memes on Instagram sometimes so uh, yeah maybe he's one of those I like you know and I hate to say this because I do love Japanese art I love Japanese paintings Japanese food um, even got Japanese pictures and engravings in my kitchen but it was a production of Kabuki at the Lowry a few years ago with a friend um, I lasted till half time as it were till the interval and I had to go I did not get it I didn't understand it and I'm very open to trying new things. And now it's time to share the second instalment of our uh, community artist call out, uh, this time with Blue Balloon Theatre. Um, well, here's Blue Balloon to tell you what they're sharing with us. Mm. Hi, we are Rebecca and Jazz. We are one half of Blue Balloon Theatre. We work predominantly in Manchester and we are a platform for creatives to develop and showcase their own original writing. We've decided to perform an excerpt of a play called Kimberlite, which is written by Hayley Mashburn, who Becca met whilst training at Lipper. The play is about a girl called Rose, a young woman who's in the in-between phase in her life. She has an average life with an average job and an average expectations. And ID, who is the embodiment of everything Rose can't stand to see in the mirror. What's on your mind? There are landmines in my mind. Ready to tick, 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 tock. Everyone talks. Everyone talks. 
And it's just too much sometimes. Some time. Some time. I just need some time. <coughs> Five minutes. You're gonna be late. Three minutes. You're gonna be late. And then you'll be fired. And then your life will be even more pathetic than it is now. My life is great. Is it? <coughs> <sighs> Phone, keys, purse, purse on the dresser. Forgetting some at face. You've got a spot right there. I know. Just saying. I know. Sure you don't want to just I don't want it to scar. Oh come on, what's one more scar? I remember. Oh, go away. It's too early for this. I remember. Eyes open, world waiting, 13 candles, happy birthday to me. I don't remember much about 13, 14, 18, 25, but I remember feeling teeth numbed with Vaseline, waking up from dreams coated with gasoline. I remember pretty, being pretty petty, knowing it was such a pity to be so close to pretty in such a petty world. I remember the day I realised no one wants a broken ugly toy. But they'll toy with a broken, ugly girl. I don't like that colour. Hold still. Hey! Uh, give me that! You'll mess it up! I can do it myself! that hi mom oh thank you yeah um it's been a good day so far uh, just get ready for work yeah just going out with evan nothing special oh well it's no one or evan i feel special yeah he's a real catch <laughs> yes of course I'll wear something nice. Yeah, I'm wearing makeup. You're welcome. Um, I've got to go. Um, sorry. <laughs> Miss you. Bye. You're such a liar. <laughs> So our expectations for this play is we want to do a full-blown um, version of this show, whether it be virtually or in person, and progress and maybe take it to festivals. And we're really excited to see where this play goes. Welcome to the Arty Farty Gallery. Uh, this gallery has been specifically curated um, for those people that sort of have never been to a gallery before, but you know, want to have a bit of um, training in advance. So that's exactly what we're doing now. This is some uh, gallery etiquette uh, with me. So let's go. Um, first of all, in a gallery, it's usually quite important to like set the tone and have some music played in the foyer. So we asked uh, the kids at Lily Lane Primary School if they could provide some music for our Arty Farty Gallery. Uh, and this is what they sent us. <laughs> So that was sent in by uh, Mo and Andy at Lily Lane Primary School. Like, all right then, 
All right, I see you there, Mo and Andy, absolute prodigies. Um, thanks for sending that in, um, and for giving us music for the Arty Party Gallery. Um, but actually, I think I'm talking a little bit too loud. Um, that's etiquette kind of rule number one in a gallery. You've got to be really quiet, because when you come in, there's already people like looking at the artwork really seriously. So if you just come in with your mate, and, oh, I love the colour in that. That's like the worst thing you can do because you get like really dirty looks off everyone. And also in every single gallery, there's a person sat in a chair in like the sort of hallway as you come in or like in between different rooms in the gallery and they're always watching. So be wary of them, yeah. Um, I'm gonna show some of the art that's in our uh, very special artifact gallery. Um, here is some here. This piece um, is, well, I don't know, it is what you want it to be, I guess. Uh, is it a sort of statement on modern day and sort of people, or is it just the gallery bin? I don't know. Uh, this piece here is uh, sort of a current piece. Make of that what you will. It's called Bear With It. Uh, this piece here, I don't know. Um, also, in a gallery, there's always like, a bit of live art so there's like a sort of room that you go into with some trepidation and there's a live art piece going live art is usually when they've got a real person doing something like willow weaving or something while singing opera um this space you know we've got our own we don't want to disappoint uh, let's have a look i was six so i fell off a swing when i was 12 i became a swing i think we'll leave that in there um yeah, uh, anyway, there's, there's always like, as well, like a sort of cinema room with like a projection of a film on and you walk in and there's like a little bench and there's a few people sat on the bench. It's always like a bench for two people and then everyone else just has to like crowd round and watch. So we've created our own room and we've used it to showcase our third and final instalment for our Arty Farty Artist call out uh, with Aaliyah's work. Aaliyah has, is a visual artist from Moston and she sent in like an amazing piece of art and she's gonna talk to us about what inspired her to make it. So the loop is actually restarting now, so go go in and watch it. Yeah, watch it, watch it. Enjoy, it's great. Hey, who's your Hi, my name's Aaliyah and I drew that on a screened graphics tablet. And the message behind it is that I think in society, we're all trying to be something that we can't be. We have unreal expectations and trying to reach something that isn't humanly possible so relating this into the drawing it is two heads clearly do not like each other and they're trying to just get away like pull each other apart but in between the faces there's a lot of scarring and you can see pain and that just relates to us that when we're trying to be something we're not it only causes more pain and hatred towards ourselves. but and also when you look at that even though it's quite scary it's still a nice drawing you know and i think that's to ourselves like we might not like it but we're still nice to other people and i also like it because it doesn't have to mean that people look at it and a few people have told me a lot of different things like how they feel during lockdown and just different meanings behind it so yeah that was my drawing mm, yeah what are you passionate about? I'm really passionate about people and community. Um, uh, this is just nothing better than coming together with your friends and meeting people and meeting new people. I would say I was passionate about music. I love music. I love old school house music. I love R&B music. Dance music. To a certain extent. I'm passionate about what I do for a living because obviously I work in the theatre but I'm front of house based. I'm passionate about the venues that I work in. I absolutely, I thank my lucky stars when I walk through the door of the Palace Theatre or the Opera House but more so the Palace that I work in such an incredible building and the history of that venue. I love history uh, my family will tell you that I do like history. I remember nothing, um, but if we're visiting somewhere, I'm, I'm always like, look up, because that's what mum used to say to me, look up, look what you can see, the buildings, the history. Um, and I'm lucky to work in a Victorian venue that's got an incredible amount of history. People that walk through the, theater, the doors for the very first time 
and you can actually feel their excitement and you can connect with that excitement and you can think back to the first time you went to the theatre and how excited you were, but that's what my passion is. I have to say the countryside and being out there. Um, uh, yes, I'm a member of the Woodland Trust, but also I'm a member, an active member with the Youth Hostel Association um, where you go out into the countryside, you visit some very remote places. So I volunteer for them because um, it's all right saying you're passionate about something if you don't actually do anything about it. So my view has always been to get out, especially children, get them out in the countryside, give them the chance to explore, to climb, to see some phenomenal views, to understand nature, the world we live in, for want of a better word. Um, so that would be my passion. I'm personally passionate about storytelling. I want to get my story across in any way I can in any form I can. Just get out there and do it. I think everyone's got an inner artist in them, whether it's to dance, you watch children, they'll just get up and dance to music, they let themselves go, uh, they'll sing along, probably like we all do to a piece of music that comes on, you suddenly start singing and moving. Um, the arts is just everything. I'm passionate about telling stories and about stepping into somebody else's shoes um, to convey emotions that they may be feeling through storytelling. Um, I'm very passionate about imagining um, utopic worlds and um, coming up with different strategies or ways to try to bring those into fruition. I think it's very important to, to imagine what we want, what we want this world to be. I'm very passionate about um, pushing that boundary and making change. And I think one of the best and um, most critical aspects of that is, is imagination, uh, which is lovely because this is all about the arts and I think it links nicely there. And why, why not? Like, <laughs> we're in a global pandemic and things could be better. I think you can smile more, <laughs> I can smile more, and I would want to smile more. And I want more reasons to smile. Although there's a lot of reasons, but why not have even more? Um, let's share the joy. Right, so that brings us to an end. Thanks so much to everybody who's got involved, everybody who's taken part, everybody who sent in videos, they were all fantastic. Um, and all the artwork, which has just blown our minds. Yeah, we really love doing this show uh, and connecting uh, with more people in our area. Uh, it really is a, a great place to be. Um, so, without further ado, um, we'll take a bow. Uh, We've been Melandra Jacks. We've been Melandra Jacks. Thank you very much. Thank Aww. you. Hey, it was good. It's good that, it was good that. It? Yeah, really good. I enjoyed Aww. that. Hey, I'll, I'll be coming here again. Yeah. <laughs> It's good. Uh, what, what is it? What are they called again? Mal Malan Melandra Jacks. Melandra Jacks. Yeah. yeah, I'll be following them. They're a good pair then. I, I wonder if they have a, an Instagram page or something we can follow. Yeah, like, I think they do. At, at Melandra underscore Jacks or something like that. Something like that. Something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so see you all soon. Stay tuned out. Ta-ra. Friend me, friend of me, any me. All these next next just want to be a mini me. All these next next just want to be a mini me. All these next next just want to be a mini me. Friend of me, friend of me, any me. All these next next just want to be a mini me. All these next next just want to be a mini me. All these next next just want to be a mini me. Friend of me, friend of me, any me. All these next next just want to be a mini me. All these next next just want to be a mini me. All these next next just want to be a mini me. Friend of me, friend of me, any me. All these next next just want to be a mini me. All these next next just want to be a mini me. All these next next just want to be a mini me. Friend of me, friend of me, any me. All these next next just want to be a mini me. All these next next just want to be a mini me. All these next next just want to be a mini me. Friend me, friend me, enemy. All these net tech just wanna be a mini me. All these net tech just wanna be a mini me.